What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to another episode of Ben Builds with Joe. We are working here on the A6M3 Model 32, and today we are going to be finishing this aircraft up and calling it quits. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. We need to go ahead and do some work here on the aircraft to get this thing finished. We need to go ahead and install some of the parts like the guns and the radio mast and the center section of the canopy. But we also have to do quite a bit of weathering. Now I overcoated the aircraft in a clear gloss by Gunzi. I don't know how durable it is. I've never tried that before as a gloss coat. It would appear to be pretty durable, but again, we won't know till we really get in there and try to start weathering it. So that's going to be a little iffy. Also, I do have to do some detail painting, such as these wing landing lights. We need to go ahead and overcoat each of these little lights with a silver color. In this case, I'm using aluminum by Vallejo. I'm also going to take a little bit of clear blue and clear red, and we're going to go over each of these bumps with those clear colors. Now, the right side of the wing is going to get the clear blue color, and the left side of the wing is going to go ahead and get the clear red color just in case you get them confused. Also, the very tip of each wing is going to be a blue light and a red light as well. That's the same process. I did that off camera just to test the system, and it seems to work pretty decently. So again, just a little bit of chrome or silver or aluminum or some sort of color overcoated with a clear blue and a clear red works beautifully. Now, in terms of weathering, we've been trying a few different things here and there, and I've come up with a very nice system I wanted to go ahead and share with everybody, and we'll continue from here. I've been using a lot of these earth and tone pastels. Because the Zero and his camouflage has a lot of reds, yellows, and browns in it, I think these earthen pastels have been really working well for me. For example, I go ahead and take my hobby knife, and I just scrape off some of the pigment, and I take my brush, and I brush it onto an area that I want to lighten up, or dirty down. In this case, I'm actually using this red color to go ahead and fade out the red here on the wings because this would have been parked on airstrips with a lot of sun damage, so it would have bleached a lot of the color. Now, it wouldn't have been necessarily as horribly scarred as some of the later war aircraft would have been because it would have been primed, but still, a little bit of fading really goes a long way. Also, the aircraft itself, the actual camouflage, can be faded in the same way by taking some of this more yellowish tan color here and just kind of going over certain panels in certain areas with this lighter color. That's going to give us a really cool variation between our paint, our chipping effects, and also this pastel effect. It really is a very, very cool system. A little bit of a blend here with a cotton swab. That should kind of tie everything together. We can always come back in, add a little bit more if we take too much away, and again, just blend it in. And this actually gives us a really cool effect. And it adds a bit of light, a bit of dark, and a nice contrast to the overall painted aircraft. So of course, it wouldn't be considered a finished weathering product without a little bit of staining around the fuel filler caps here on the wings and also on the cowling. I'm going to go ahead and add a, just a little bit right around the center and kind of draw it out. And then I'm going to streak it back towards the trailing edge of the wing. My theory here is that, well, maybe they were filling up some of the aircraft wing tanks, some dust or dirt gets up on the aircraft itself from their boots, and then it ends up staining some of the streaks off of those caps. At least that's my idea. I don't know if it would have been 100% accurate, but I like the look of it, and it adds a little bit of extra spice to the model itself. Again, I'm just going to kind of streak those from leading edge to trailing edge, give it a little bit extra interest. Now on the bottom side of the aircraft, I want to add a little bit of weathering, but nothing too heavy because most of the action would have been on top of the wings, like people walking around, people doing maintenance work, people fueling up the aircraft. I wanted to go ahead and do more weathering on the top and leave the bottom just dirty and not so distressed. Also, I'm going to take a little bit of some colored pencil here and there and chip just tiny panels here and there as if rocks may have been kind of kicked up and hit the bottom of the aircraft. Also do a little bit of that around the cowling. Nothing too fancy, pretty standard stuff. I do want to go ahead and kind of stain the area right around the center section where the fuel tank would have been mounted. My thinking is here that, well, maybe it's a little bit on the full side. So when they dropped their tank, some of the gas would have kind of spilled out. And that, of course, would have been later on dirtied up by landing on a dirty field. And so I want to go ahead and kind of streak it just a little bit. A lot of it will be hidden when I go ahead and mount that drop tank anyway. But I think it just adds a little bit of extra interest in case you kind of get in there and peek around all the wheel wells and the actual tank itself. I think it just adds a little extra fun, a little extra interest. I also take a little bit of the oil and streak it as if it was coming out of the landing gear bays themselves. 
You never know, there may have been something leaking in there or some oil, and I wanted to add a little bit of that right there to add some extra interest. It's all about subtlety with me. I really like the subtle weathering. So let's now go ahead and install the fuel tank itself. This is actually the Hasegawa fuel tank that I took out of the A6M2 Model N that I built for the All at Sea Group build. And I dropped a little bit of red paint on the fuel filler cap and oiled it up just a little bit. Though you're not going to see any of it though because it's hidden between the inner gear bay doors. So you can't see much of it at all. But that's cool. We'll just go ahead and drop a little bit of extra thin around there to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. This is coming along and I'm really excited to see how it ends up. So one thing I did forget to do, and I'm kind of kicking myself for doing this, I forgot to paint a different color on the ailerons the elevators, and the rudder. It actually is a different color. It's actually more of a grayish color. So I've got this XF20 I'm going to use. It's not so much the gray-green color. Because they're fabric, we need to go ahead and paint them a little different color to show that they're a different material. So I'm going to use my XF20, which is a beautiful, beautiful color to use. And I think it matches well with the gray-green. Shouldn't stand out too much, but it should be just different enough that you know, oh, that's something different. So let's go ahead and load it up in the airbrush, mask off the areas, Get the ailerons, elevator, and rudder painted up. So that was actually very difficult to do, not on the wings though, because those are pretty straightforward. The rudder, the rudder was a nightmare because unfortunately I already put the decals on, so I had to mask off the decals in order to go ahead and paint those ailerons and the rudder, the lighter gray color. That was a nightmare. I'd recommend not doing that, but I wanted to see if I couldn't kind of blend everything together, and so far it's good enough. It looks awesome. 
So now we have to go ahead and dirty up the ailerons with a little bit of AIM weathering powder. I'm going to use the dark gray version and we're just going to go ahead and brush it on to the actual fabric covered surfaces. Take in a Q-tip and we're going to blend it all together and dirty them down. I don't know what the rate of wear would have been, say for fabric versus metal, but I do want to go ahead and dirty down that fabric and kind of tie it all together. Because right now, like I said, it's a little bit too clean and it stands out too much. So I want to go ahead and use some of that weathering powder and just tie everything together so that it all kind of matches with the level of weathering. So one of the last steps we have to do here is we need to go ahead and install the guns and go ahead and overcoat the entire aircraft with a flat coat. Now for the guns themselves, I took a plastic Q-tip and I stretched it over an open fire. That is a really cool technique to do because not only does it give you a circular shape, but it also gives you a very thin walled circular shape that is perfect size, in my opinion, for guns or pilot points or anything that's like a tubing. That's a really good way to go ahead and get that done. We also have to go ahead and overcoat the entire aircraft in a flat color. Now, I'm actually going to be using something a little bit different. I have some Winsor Newton matte varnish that I picked up from one of my local art stores, and I really want to try that out. It's supposed to be simply fantastic. So I might take that and mix it with a little bit of future, give myself a semi-gloss sheen, not so flat, not so glossy, because right now it's pretty glossy. So this is going to really help to kind of bring everything down and even everything out. Also, it's going to act as an overcoat for all of my pastels and my weathering powders that I've used recently, so those don't rub off and they stay put. So let's go ahead and hit that matte varnish and get this thing finished up. Now, one last thing, guys, before we go ahead and show you the final reveal, I need to go ahead and install the chair. This is something I've been meaning to do since like episode two. So I've thrown some seat belts on there using some Tamiya tape and a little bit of wire. So we're good. Now we're just installing that into the cockpit itself. All I have to do now is just throw on the antenna and put on that center section of the canopy and we'll be ready for the final reveal. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, let me go ahead and show you the finished A6M3 Model 32 by Tamiya in 148 scale. Here she is all finished up and ready for the display case. I gotta tell you, this has been a really, really fun build. The aircraft itself just turned out beautifully. And I gotta tell you, this kit is awesome. If you haven't picked one up, grab one. They're cheap. Also, this matte varnish I've been using awesome stuff really with a little bit of future mixed in there it gives you a nice almost satin finish so it's beautiful stuff i highly recommend it i will be using it again and again so you can see here from the close-up we have a nice blend of subtle weathering here and there we've got some gun dust coming off of the guns we've got some staining around the fuel caps we've got our ailerons and elevators and rudder painted up with a slightly different gray color to give it a little bit of a differentiation between the overall gray green i went ahead and went through with the earth and pastels and i stained different panels and i lightened other panels i've got some staining around the fuel filler caps both on the wings and right there in front of the cockpit itself. I went ahead and reused a different headrest and I reused a different drop tank. These are from the Hasegawa kit. I also added in a resin molded A6M3 instrument panel that I stole out of another A6M3 kit and I molded out of resin. That was a lot of fun. I painted on my markings. I also used a little bit of colored pencil to chip certain areas and painted on all of the other markings except for the writing itself. This was an amazing build. But anyway, guys, this has been so much fun. And I wanted to go ahead and thank each and every one of you for sticking it out, watching my episodes, being interested in my work and just all of your support and your comments. And this has been so much fun. Also, huge thank you to Joe over there at Mad Genius Productions. This has been an amazing experience, Joe. Thank you so much for jumping in on this with me and just pushing through. I know I took a little longer than I said I was going to. I just got carried away with all these other ideas I had for the kit, you know, and painting on the markings and running brake cables and 
adding in a resin insert there for the front instrument panel. I just kind of went crazy a little bit with it, but I had so much fun. So thank you so much for jumping in with me and building along. I really hope we can do this again very, very soon. But anyway, guys, that is it. The A6M3 Model 32 is finished. I want to thank each and every one of you again. Thank you so much for joining me. We will see you back here on the next episode of Ben Builds. Until then, you know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool, and we will see you back here on the next episode of Ben Builds. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thank you.